Hey guys, this is Nefarious Intent, back for part 2 of the Minecraft 1.8 Hacked Client Coding Tutorial. In this video, we will be coding the core or base of the hacked client. This includes the client class, the module system, and the event system. This video series is brought to you by Intent, the leading marketplace for premium Minecraft cheats with affordable prices. Check them out at intent.store. Now we'll open Eclipse and select the workspace we used last time. All right, Eclipse is open. You can select the client and the source folder and we can right click on any Minecraft package and click new package and then get rid of everything that was there. You can name it whatever you want. Traditionally, the package structure follows a URL backwards, but that doesn't really matter because we're not developing a library that's gonna be used by someone else. So just name it whatever you're comfortable with. For this video, I'm gonna name it Intent because that's my organization. And then I'm gonna click New Class and then I'm gonna name it Client. This is gonna serve as our main interface to all of the functions within our hacked client. So name it something you're comfortable with. You can name it the client name or whatever you want. Now we're going to name the client. So I'll create a public static string. This just means we'll be able to access this variable from anywhere in Minecraft. And I'm gonna name it name. So right now this string is equal to null, which means if you try to use it, it will return null. And if you try to perform functions on it, it will crash the client. So we're gonna set it equal to something. In this case, I'm gonna name it tutorial because this is a tutorial. <laughs> Next, I'm going to create another variable also a public static string called version and I'm going to set it equal to one. Since the variables have the same type we can erase the first part of the second string and backspace it right up into tutorial and add a comma and now we're only using one line but we're still initiating two variables. The next step is to create our Minecraft hook method. This will be used to register the client and start up all the routines at the same time Minecraft is start up. So we're going to create a public static void startup. Now we'll place this method in the Minecraft class so that it can be run at the start of the program. So we're going to actually scroll around a little bit until we find a certain place in the code in start game. So I'm scrolling around and right here after the in-game GUI is set we're going to create a little area here and we're going to type in the name of our client class and then startup. Now the client will be initiated when Minecraft is initiated. We can prove that by creating a system, I don't know, my clips are screwed up. We're gonna create a system out print line, and then we're going to say um, starting name, and then a space, and then the version. And then when I run Minecraft, it should say that at some point. So we're gonna look at the console. Indeed, you can see right here, it says starting tutorial one. Now I'm gonna actually add a version to that. So it says starting tutorial version one, and I'm gonna add a little dash in between as well. We can run that again, and it should have taken effect. When I run the client, it will print that message right here in the console. And as you can see, there it is. Now I'll also make it set the display title to the name of the client, so display, set title, I spelled it wrong, and then the name, and then v, and then version, and I'm also going to set this to v as well, because that looks better. And now when I run it, after it's done launching, the title will change to tutorial v1. We can also go into Minecraft and search up Minecraft 1.8 which is where the original title is set and we can change that to loading and then we can go to client name and then it will say loading as you can see loading tutorial and then when it's done loading it changes to tutorial v1 now it's time to create our module system i'll go to the intent package right click new package and continue on the current name with modules added to it then i'll hit finish now I'll create a new class called module and this is going to be our prototype for what all cheats will have in them. 
um, the basic name, the toggled status, the on enable, that kind of stuff. So I'm going to create a new public st string, not static this time, because there's going to be multiple versions of this class in the client, because each module will be based off of this structure. So after we've done public string name, we're going to do public boolean toggled. And this is just a true or false statement that determines whether the module is on or off. Now I'll create the module constructor. This is a way for us to initialize new modules. So I'm going to say public module, and then I'm going to type in the parameters I want. So name and keybind, which I haven't created yet. So I'm going to create another public int key code, and then I'm going to save it. It's still errored because there's missing code that it's expecting, but we'll solve that in just a second. So then I'm going to type int key, and then I'm going to put a little brace there and hit enter, and all the errors are gone. Now to actually use this constructor to set the variables that are in stone, we're going to type this and then name equals name. Name right here is a local variable, which means it only exists for this little snippet of code, whereas the name in blue is permanent. So as well as the name we're setting, we're also going to set the key code. So key code equals key. And this is basically just the key we'll be using to toggle the modules later. Now I'll create some basic methods to get this information. So like public boolean is enabled will return the toggle status like that. And get key will return the key code. I'll also create another method to toggle the module which is a void and that will just toggle the toggled status so toggle will equal whatever is not the current toggle so it'll switch itself true false true false constantly every time this method is called I'll also create some listeners which are voids called on enable and another public void on disable and these will be called every time the module is either enabled or disabled. And I'll call them like this. I'll say if the module was just toggled, then we want to call on enable. Otherwise, call on disable. Next, we're going to create our category system. We can start by making a public enum category. This serves as a word bank for our different category names. So I'm going to type combat movement, uh, player, and render. These are the categories I'm using, but you can use other ones, you can change the names, that kind of stuff. So then, now we have this word bank, we need to actually select uh, one of the categories for each module. So I'm going to create a public category category, and this is just a variable for the category of the current module, and we can set that with a constructor. So I'm going to say it's going to require a category as a parameter, and then we're going to plug that in. So this, okay, category equals C. So now the category is set when you initialize a module. Now we need a place to store our list of modules. So we're gonna go back to our client and type public copy on write array list, and we're gonna call it modules, and we're gonna set it equal to a new copy on write array list of the type module. And I also need to specify the type here with these little carrots. And then I'm going to also make it static so that we can access it from anywhere in Minecraft. And then I'm going to import the different types, the copy on right array list and the module. Before we start making our cheats, we have to make a place to receive the key presses so we can toggle our modules with the key binds. So I'm going to create a public void called key press, and it's going to have a parameter of an integer called key. And then we're going to go into Minecraft, and we're going to find around line 1933. It does vary a little bit, but you're looking for this sort of area right here, past the, if, the else statement. So we're going to hit enter twice to give us some room. And before we continue, we're going to go back to the client class and change this void to static so we can access it from Minecraft. And then we're going to type client, key press, and then the parameter for the key is going to be variable one. 
And again, this may vary too, but you're just looking for the statement right here that says var1 equals one. Whatever's right here that I highlighted will also be what you wanna plug in here. Now that we're receiving key presses to this method right here, we can start enumerating our module list and toggling modules based on their key binds. So we're gonna say for module m, which is gonna be our local variable name we're gonna use for this little loop right here, out of the array list modules, then we're going to say if m dot key code or get key actually equals key then m toggle now we're going to create our first cheat i'm going to right click the intent modules package and go to new package and i'm going to create a package called movement and this is going to be our movement category package for all movement modules now i'm going to create a class inside of that called fly and this is going to be our fly hack and before I get started, I have to make sure the fly extends module so it gets access to all of this stuff right here. And I'm going to import it. All right. Now we have to create a constructor for fly. And how I'm going to do this is by creating a new constructor for the fly subclass. And then inside of that, I'm going to say super, which is going to create a constructor for the super class. And I'm going to fill in the parameters. So the parameters we need to fill in are name, key, and category. So for the name, it's obviously fly. For the key, it's going to be keyboard dot g. So key g. That's just my personal preference. And then for category, it's going to be category movement. And then I'm going to add that little colon semicolon there and we're good no errors and we've initiated our first module to actually add that to the client we have to in the startup method type modules add and then new fly and then add the semicolon there and import fly now we've created our first fly module it doesn't do anything right now but it exists and if we start the client it will be in the code somewhere now we can't see it until we add a heads up display so we can actually view what modules are enabled and until we add the code that makes the fly actually fly. Now that we have our fly created, we need an event system. An event system is a way for us to pass game events to the module with relevant information. I'll start by right clicking the intent package and going to new package and creating a package called events. So in this events package, we're gonna create a new class called event. And this class has one boolean, so one true or false inside of it. It's called public boolean canceled. And this is the boolean that determines whether what's about to happen in the game will actually run or not. So after we create the boolean for canceled, we need to make it so that the event is the type T. And this is just so later in the video we'll be able to do some cool stuff with the events. Now we're going to create an event type. This is just a way for us to determine whether the event is happening or has already happened, and it'll also allow us to determine whether certain actions are incoming or sending out. Now I'm going to create a new enum in the package intent events called event type. This will contain two words, pre and post. Next, I'll create another enum called event direction, which will contain two words as well incoming and outgoing. I'll then instantiate them in the event class with public event type type and public event direction direction. Next we're going to use Eclipse automatic getters and setters tool to create getters and setters for these fields. So as you can see it just generated all that code for us and we'll now be able to use that later. So before we continue, we also want to make a couple custom methods, like one called isPre, and that will return whether the event type is pre. So if the event type equals null, then return false, because it can't be pre if it doesn't equal anything. And let me just add the return there. And then if it isn't null, then if type equals event type pre, then return true. Or more simply, return type equals event type pre. And we can copy and paste that for the post as well and change the names. And let me make sure I don't mess that up. There we go. Now I'll also create one for the event directions. So is 
incoming event direction incoming and I'll change the type to direction and then I'll paste that there and then I'll erase that <laughs> Now we'll create our first most basic event. We'll create a new package called listeners that goes inside these other packages. And then we'll make a new event, so a new class called event update. And this will extend off of event with the type event update. And then we'll import the event. Next, we're gonna go to the client and make a method called public static void on event with the parameter event e as the name. And we're gonna import event, and my Eclipse is messing up showing it, but we want to import that. So I'm gonna save it, and hopefully that'll refresh its little previewer. Okay, there we go. And then I'm gonna make another method inside module, also called on event, just not static, with the same parameter and I'm gonna import it as well there. Then I'm gonna go back to client and say for module m out of modules m on event and plug in the e value. So now when I call on event to the client, it will also call that event for all modules. But before we continue, I need to make sure that the module is toggled. If it's not toggled, then it will continue. So putting a little exclamation point in front of that negates the statement. So if the module is not on, then it won't pass the event. Now I can open up Entity Player SP and scroll down to about here where you see the start sprinting, stop sprinting stuff. And then at the beginning of the method, put in client on event, new event update using the event update we just created and hit that. But also I want to specify the event type before. So I'm gonna create an instance of event update right here called E. And then I'm gonna set E's type. So set type to event type pre so that that is set to pre instead of null. And then instead of saying new event type here, I'm just gonna plug in the E. So now on every player update, which is about a tick, it's gonna create an event update, set it to pre and call it to all modules. Now we can go to our fly hack again and create a new method called public void on event. This event method is actually based off of the one we put in module since it's got the same name and it extends off of the class. So we've got to make sure we type it verbatim so that it knows to pick up on whatever's called here. So event, import the event type, and then we're going to say if e, if e is the instance of event update, so we can actually have multiple different types of events being called here. So we want to make sure we're dealing with the event update and not just any event. And then if that's true, we're going to say if E is pre. So we know it's this one right here instead of something down here when we later call that as well. So if it's the type update and it is the pre, then we're going to continue with the program. We're also going to create some methods to pick up on calls from on enable and on disable. We can just copy and paste these right into fly. And now every time the module is toggled, this will call. And every time the module is disabled, this will call. So before we continue, we need to give ourselves a version of Minecraft that we can access within fly. We'll do this by going to module, going to the top and creating a public Minecraft variable called MC and setting it equal to Minecraft.getMinecraft. Now we can go back to fly, and when we type mc dot, it'll have a bunch of stuff here. And that's the variables inside of Minecraft. So for fly, we're gonna go to mc dot the player dot capabilities dot is flying equal true. And also we're gonna say allow flying equal true. And on disable, we're going to say is flying equals false and allow flying equals false. And I gotta make sure I keep that little brace right there so it doesn't error. And as you can see, this should enable fly and disable fly. So I'm gonna open up Minecraft, wait for it to launch, and then go into a world. And when I press G, I'll start flying. And as you can see, I'm flying. When I disable it, 
by pressing G again, I fall. This concludes part two of the Minecraft 1.8 hacked client coding tutorial. I'll see you in the next video.